be clear. If President Trump and his administration had done their jobs early on with this crisis, American schools would be open and they'd be open safely. Instead, American families all across this country are paying the price for his failures. President Trump may not think his, this is a national emergency, but I think going back to school for millions of children and the impacts on their families and the community is a national emergency. President Trump still doesn't have any real plan for how to open our schools safely. No real plan. He's offering nothing but failure and delusions. From the start to finish, the American families and our children are paying the price for his failures. Failure to take this virus seriously early on in January and February, and it's spread around the globe. Failure to take steps we needed back in March and April to get this pandemic under control, to institute widespread testing and tracing, to control the spread. Failure to provide clear national science-based guidelines to state and local authorities. And failure to model even basic responsibility like socially distancing and wearing a mask. And failure to make sure educators and administrators have the equipment, the resources, and the training they need to open safely under the circumstances we find now. Donald Trump and Betsy DeVos haven't, Secretary DeVos haven't stepped up. And we're all seeing the results. I laid out my plans back in June and July, a roadmap for how to open, reopen safely and effectively. You can read them by going to JoeBiden.com. We need straightforward, common sense solutions. But Trump refuses to act, starving schools of the needed funding, funding they need now, now. This is an emergency, Mr. President. This is an emergency. And Donald Trump and his FEMA should treat it as one. Mr. President, where are you? Where are you? Why aren't you working on this? We need emergency support funding for our schools, and we need it now. Mr. President, that's your job. That's your job. That's what you should be focused on now. Not whipping up fear and division. Not inciting violence in our streets. Get off Twitter and stop your boast about never being seen that what you, you, you can do anything. You're, you, you always talk about your ability to negotiate. Negotiate a deal. A deal for somebody other than yourself. Now I'm happy to uh, take questions you may have. I guess staff's going to call on whoever. Thank you all so very much for taking the time. Thank you. I know you always ask a hostile question, but go ahead. A hostile question? No, go ahead. Thank you, sir. So, uh, you said, and you have said recently, that uh, you warned, I'll step up to the mic so they can hear us at home. Uh, you said that you warned President Trump in January that there was going to be a pandemic and what needed to be done. If you knew that, then why were you still hosting crowded campaign rallies in March? Now, what I talked about was not what had to be done. What I said, you've got to take this seriously. You've got to insist that we have access to Wuhan, insist that we have access in China to find out for ourselves. We had 44 people from CDC there. You cannot continue to talk about uh, uh, the president of China saying he's done a, m a marvelous job. He's doing a great, a great job. When it got up to March, I kept saying, look, you've got to invoke, and you remember, I think I was the first, I may be mistaken, person calling about the Defense Production Act. We don't have enough of the, I, I, it's amazing we use a phrase like PPE and the public knows what that is now, but protective equipment and gear and ventilators. Use that authority. Use it to go out there now and don't wait. And don't wait to talk about the need for us to have masks and don't wait to talk about, that's what I, what I talked about. And then I began to lay out for him. He, we actually had a conversation. I, I can't remember when it was. I think it was March. Maybe it was April. In that, in that range. And I said, he said, if Biden wants to help, I want to talk to him. So I talked to him. I laid out what I thought should be done to be able to reopen safely and the things we should do. And he was very polite. He listened. And he said he'd think about it. And that was the end of it. And so what 
I what began to become really clear is that as the science began to show that this was able to spread much more easily than people thought, two, two issues. Was a pandemic coming? And how did it most, how, what's the most, the way it did the most damage? And as that became clearer and clearer, we concluded that we just can't continue to have these large rallies. And, uh, you know, think about it. Here we are, the rest of the world, the places that have done extremely well in terms of dealing with this COVID crisis around the world. You know, we have the five largest countries in Europe have a population larger than the United States of America. Yet, we're in month of August, we're losing a thousand lives a day and they're losing 57 a day, combined. Combined. All of them combined. So, I just don't, as we learn more, and we did learn more, and by, by March and April, we knew a whole heck of a lot more, why weren't we doing what needed to be done? Why are we being told that, don't we have plenty of protective gear? And the, the one big thing that I did push a lot on, I wasn't the only one, was on the need for testing and tracing and moving rapidly to make sure that you had the capacity to test and trace before it got so out of control. We need to do that now. But here's the thing, and I'll end with this. I apologize for keeping you. No, well. We don't see that. Yeah. Um, the thing that I, I, I just don't quite understand is when it's clear that some of the things that the president says are simply not true relating to this crisis. And when enormous pressure is put on professionals in the administration from the CDC to NIH across the board, why do we think, God willing, when we get a vaccine that is good, works, why do we think the public's going to line up to be able to take the, being willing to take the injection? We've lost so much confidence, the American people, in what's said. Because we're finding out, again today, plasma, well, that doesn't quite work the way we were told it was. Hell of a lot of pressure put on that person to say that. This president has said so many things that are untrue, that are just wrong. In order to do anything, he looks at it in one way. If the market, stock market is high and it's moving, and we're reducing the number of people who are in real trouble economically, then it doesn't matter what I say. That's the objective. That's the objective. The objective is to keep the American people safe so we can begin to get back to normal, rebuilding our economy and bringing back economic growth. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.